so hello everyone uh, let us start with the oral pathology test 2 moving with the first question the bite mark analysis involves a comparison of bite marks with the uh, you can see this figure it's the bite mark of the individuals uh, that were that is represented here on the on the cast so the bite marks analysis involves the comparison of the bite marks with the number one the dental records so this is the most relevant and most common use method in the bite mark analysis so the most common method is the dental records so that is the answer the dental records including the dental impressions x-rays and treatment record it can provide the detailed information about the person dental characteristics uh, second option is the fingerprints the fingerprints uh, the bite mark analysis it is a distinct field from the fingerprint analysis the fingerprint analysis involves the study of the unique pattern and ridges on the skin surfaces particularly on the fingers and the palm so it is used for the identification purposes but it is not directly related to the bite mark analysis the third is third comes the dna evidence so dna analysis involves the examination of the genetic material from the biological samples like blood saliva or hair to identify the individuals the last option is the hair samples so yes the hair samples could be collected so the bite mark analysis involves a comparison of bite marks with the bite marks with the dental records so this one is the mnemonic remember b i t e bite mark identification impression teeth character teeth characteristics and evidence collection that is uh, that is for the uh, bite mark moving to the next question the bite mark analysis it can be used to determine uh determine all of the following except it can be used to determine all of the following except the dental history of the biter uh the gender the first option is the uh, gender of biter uh in some cases the bite mark analysis it may provides clue about the gender of the biter such as the size and the shape of the dental arches or the spacing of the teeth can be determined by this by this terminology second is the approximate age of the biter so one can identify by the development and the wear pattern of their teeth their eruption pattern one can identify the precise age of the biter third is the dental history of biter so dental history cannot be identified the dental history of the biter cannot be identified the identity of the biter yes it can be identified through getting all the following methods the third is the th uh, the next question is a 35 years old pregnant woman present with a peripheral neuropathy glossitis that is the inflamed tongue and angular gelitis that is there is inflammation present at the corner of mouth she will report a restricted diet due to the ethical belief avoiding all animal products avoiding all animal products laboratory tests show megaloblastic anemia with hypersegmented neutrophils so that is the key option so the clinical presentation of peripheral neuropathy glossitis angular gelitis and megaloblastic anemia with hypersegmented neutrophils in a pregnant woman with a restricted diet uh, lacking the animal products it is a it is a highly suggestive of vitamin b12 deficiency so remember b12 deficiency it is found in the animal based food and strict vegetarian diets and strict vegan diets so b12 we know all that it is essential for the normal functioning of the nervous system rbc production and dna synthesis so its deficiency can result in various neurological symptoms 
megaloblastic anemia and uh, uh, and uh, symptoms like glossitis and angulocytitis whereas the other options like the vitamin b6 well deficiency it can also lead to peripheral neuropathy but the characteristic finding uh, like the megaloblastic anemia hypersegmented neutrophils it points towards the b12 deficiency in this case uh, third is the vitamin c deficiency that is scurvy uh, the here the patient will presents with the bleeding gums seizure bruising and poor wound healing whereas in a vitamin e deficiency that is the tocopherol deficiency it can cause neurological symptoms but it is less likely uh, uh, to be uh, uh, as mentioned in the clinical history and presentation moving to the another question the characteristic triad that shows iron deficiency cholinokia or spoon shaped nail so dysphagia that is difficult in swallowing that is the function of the plummer vinson syndrome so the plummer vinson syndrome uh, it is a rare it is a syndrome that is often characterized by a triad triad iron deficiency anemia esophageal webs cellulitis glossitis these are the feature of a plummer vinson syndrome it is often associated with iron deficiency anemia that can leads to various symptoms like spoon shaped nails and difficult swallowing other options like eagle syndrome uh, the eagle syndrome where there is elongation of the styloid process that would cause a pain in the throat region so either there will be a elongation of styloid process or there can be calcification of styloid ligament the other option c is the fanconi syndrome what is fanconi syndrome it is a genetic disorder that affect the renal tubules in the kidney that leads to impaired resorption of certain substances like glucose some amino acid and electrolytes so that is also not option uh, uh, stark weber syndrome uh, it is a congenital disorder characterized by facial birthmarks that are the port mine stings again that's not the correct answer so your answer will be plummer vinson syndrome <sighs> moving moving to the next question a male a male reported with a slow growing white colored small rough surface pedunculated enlargement seen on the right buccal mucosa so this is the enlargement you can see uh, uh, i have provided with the various images however these images are not uh, given in your exam or in questions so you can just cross check them uh, moving to the question on further questioning he confirmed a similar lesion in the genital organs so your uh, so your diagnosis will be uh, the condition here described is slow growing white colored slow growing white colored small rough pedunculated enlargement seen on the buccal mucosa that characterizes a squamous papilloma other conditions like uh, verica vulgaris pyogenic granuloma condyloma acuminatum if uh, described the different conditions so answer here will be squamous papilloma next question a teenager family reports to dental clinic with a complaint of multiple shallow ulcers in labial mucosa and alveolar mucosa with no similar signs uh, uh cutaneous lesions so incisional biopsy will give a picture of non specific inflammatory lesions the provisional diagnosis it is the it is the minor recurrent aphthous ulcers so these are more frequent ulcers that could be seen multiple shallow ulcers that confirms the diagnosis of a minor recurrent aphthous ulcers moving to the next question patterson kelly syndrome uh, patterson kelly syndrome is also known as plummer vinson syndrome so there will be dysphagia dysphagia difficulty in swallowing angular cheilitis and candidiasis
So this one is the triad. This is 3G iron deficiency is of AGL web. We discussed just few minutes back. <sighs> Moving to the another question. A 58 years old male presents with a hemorrhagic crusting of his lips following a course of antibiotic therapy. So he does not have any systemic manifestation. So you can clearly see these uh, these are the these are the hemorrhagic crusting that would appear on the lips. So that's that a characteristic feature of the multiforme. So that is a skin condition that is characterized by sudden onset of target lesions. Target lesions we have discovered very well in the uh, OP test one video lecture. Just go through that. You will get to know what is this. Uh, target lesions. So you can see the hemorrhagic crusting of lips that can occur on the in the lips in the erythema multiforme. Uh, various factors. It may be triggered by the various factors like like the antibiotic. So antibiotic could trigger it. Just remember that. Other options like anaphylaxis, Bassett syndrome, lichen planus. They have a clean a different clinical presentation. They are less likely to cause hemorrhagic crusting of the lips following the antibiotic therapy. So your answer would be would be A. Moving to the next question, a 65 year old male presents to you for the dental treatment for rapidly growing ulcerated and indurated lesions. He is a chronic chain smoker, uh, 20 cigarettes per day. On examination, you will see a hard, fixed, non-tender submandibular lymph node gland it is palpable so your investigation would be uh, since it is a rapid growing ulcerated indurated uh, and the patient is a chronic chain smoker with a hard fixed known tender submandibular lymph node so that will raise a significant concern for the for the oral squamous cell uh, carcinoma so, uh, so remember the oral cell carcinoma oral squamous cell carcinoma is a malignant tumor it is a malignant tumor associated with the tobacco use, especially smoking. So, the uh, presence of ulcerated, indurated, uh, with the history of smoking, it is a red flag. It is a red flag for the potential oral cancer. And the possibility of submandibular lymph node suggests the regional lymph node involvement that is common in advanced oral cancer. Moving to the uh, next question, a patient reported with asymptomatic white patch on the buccal mucosa that cannot be rubbed off. So this white patch you can clearly see it is it is a uh, it is seen in the leukoplakia. The most probably diagnosis for the heavy cigarette smokers with asymptomatic white patch on the buccal mucosa that cannot be rubbed off and has been present for last. Three months, it's it's leukoplakia. So leukoplakia, it is a white patch or plaque of the oral mucosa, uh, including present most commonly in the bacca mucosa. So leukoplakia, it is strongly associated with uh, tobacco use, and it is a precursor to the oral squamous cell carcinoma that just that was discussed just later on. So other conditions like candidiasis or white spawn genevas may also be present with a white patch but the history of heavy cigarette smoking and chronicity of the lesion make lipoplakia the most likely diagnosis. The erythroplakia that is characterized by red patch and it is associated with a higher risk of malignancy. Moving to, moving to the next question. A patient on antibiotic th therapy for the scarlet fever develops white plaque uh, on his oral mucosa, which, when scraped, leave a painful bleeding, bleeding surface. The most common diagnosis it is the presence of white plaques on the oral mucosa when scraped with a tongue blade. It is characteristic of oral candidiasis or the thrush. That is a fungal infection that is caused by which uh, which uh, which fungal inf uh, microorganism. It is Candida species, mainly the Candida albicans. The next question, 
examination of childish or diffused enlargement of left side of tongue uh, with small elevated grayish pink nodules of which we uh, which are fluid filled with the rest of oral cavity being normal so most common diagnosis it will be it will be lymphangioma so this question this image based question was asked in one of your uh, one of the exam uh, assessment uh, aims assessment questions and this figure was asked and identify that uh, it is uh, lymphangioma so the most common diagnosis for child with enlargement of the left side of tongue with small elevated grayish pink nodules some of which are fluid filled is the is the lymphangioma lymphangioma they are the benign tumors of lymphatic vessels they can occur in various part of body including the tongue so so in oral cavity they will present as cystic or nodular lesions with grayish pinkish appearance so these nodules can contain a fluid species moving to the next question the sangre spicules they are radiographic characteristic of the answer is osteosarcoma Sun, uh, so the sangre spicules they are radiograph uh, radiographic characteristic associated with osteosarcoma so this appearance it occurs when uh, when the lesion grows rapidly and periosteum is unable to deposit a new bone in an organized manner so the sharpest fiber that attach the periosteum to the bone they stretch out and forms a spicules that that radiates outward outwards from the lesion creating a sunburst or sun ray pattern on the x ray image a 15 year old man complains of tingling sensation in the lower lip intraoral examination discloses a painless hard swelling in the mandibular premolar region the patient first noticed this swelling 3 weeks the radiographic uh, indicates loss of cortex and diffuse uh, radiation uh, radiating pattern of trabeculae so most common it is it is osteosarcoma moving to the next question tb can be easily differentiated from squamous cell carcinoma by yes the biopsy can confirm the diagnosis so a biopsy involves taking a tissue sample from the affected area and examining it under microscope so in the case of tuberculosis specific staining techniques and culture may be necessary to confirm the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis whereas the squamous cell uh, carcinoma will show So cancerous change in the tissue so when the nevus cell they are limited to the basal cell layer of epithelium it is known as it is known as so when the nevus cell they are limited to basal cell layer of epithelium it is a junctional epithelium so junctional epithelium are a type of nevi that consists of nevus cell within basal layer of the within the basal layer of the epidermis the compound nevus so they are present in both the epidermis as well as the dermis the intradermal nevus they are entirely within the dermis which type of hodgkin lymphoma is associated with the best prognosis so lymphocyte predominant it is associated with the best prognosis and which sub type it is associated with the worst uh, worst prognosis it's the lymphocytic depletion remember that which is associated which is most common it is the nodular sclerosis that is the most uh, most common variety and has a favorable prognosis moving to the next question a 60 year male uh, 
reported with chronic cuff and a large bilateral parotid glands fnac from parotid glands no reveal no granuloma so your answer would be would be sarcoidosis so the most uh, sarcoidosis it is a inflammatory disorder that can affect the various organs like the uh, lungs cervical glands parotid glands so in large bilateral parotid glands they are the feature of the in large bilateral parotid glands they are the feature of the sarcoidosis tb can also cause granulomatous inflammations uh, the sarcoidosis it is more likely in the absence of the absence of the chisating granuloma and it is uh, it presents with the parotid gland enlargement and chronic cough so the option c d they are not associated with parotid gland enlargement so that is why your answer is sarcoidosis highest incidence toward malignancy malignancy it is the erythroplakia so remember for your exam erythroplakia has the highest malignancy highest incidence toward the malignancy many a time asked in your entrance exam a lady complains her 9 year old daughter it is suffering from oral ulceration fever and shedding of skin from palms and soles she is giving history of premature exfoliation of teeth and increased sweating so the, all these features are of acrodynia so acrodynia it is due to the chronic remember acrodynia is due to the mercury mercury poisoning so it is also known as pink's pink disease so what is characterized by a range of symptoms that includes fever shedding of skin from the palms and sole exfoliation of teeth uh, increasing sweating and other manifestation so the uh, here it is given a history of patient giving using a new teething gel so it is possible that the gel that contains mercury or mercury related component that can develop acrodynia the next question an adolescent girl orange yellow pigmentation it is seen on the permanent teeth so that is uh, there is a history of chronic disease for which she was hospitalized the reason it could be pellagra so remember the uh, the orange yellow pigment the orange yellow pigment it is it is caused due to the telegraphitis caused due to the deficiency of vitamin b3 so the orange yellow pigmentation on the permanent teeth with history of chronic disease it is mostly due to the due to the pellagra moving to the next question a 50 years old patient complains of burning sensation on eating spicy food and complains of blister formation on digital palpitation the mucosa slough off histopath evidence of acantholysis and suprabasilar split so all this we have discussed in the it is example of pemphigus vulgaris all these are feature of pemphigus vulgaris we have discussed that uh, later on a man who consumed meal a uh, meat sandwich at the party and complains of nausea vomiting and abdominal pain after 2 hours what could be the cause the most common cause is staphylo staphylococcal toxin cephalotoxin it is the most common cause of the food poisoning so the symptoms of nausea vomiting abdominal pain within a short time frame within 2 hours after consumption of meat it is suggestive of staphylococcus infection so it occurs when the food is handled and stored improperly 
so that will allow the staphylococcus aureus bacteria to produce toxin and that cause that can cause gastric uh, gastric symptoms moving to the next question hereditary angioedema it is due to the it is due to the deficiency of enzyme c1 inhibitor that is a regulatory protein of the complement system so this deficiency that leads to uncontrolled activation of the complement system so that will be there will be a uh, recurrent episode of swelling and edema in the skin and the mucous membrane moving to the next question in sickle cell anemia certain radiographic changes in the bone of the skull appears so these are these are the these appearance are the hair on and appearance so in sickle anemia certain radiographic changes in the bone of skull it can occurs that include the hair on end effect so uh, that results from the increase erythropoiesis in the bone marrow that will lead to the increase erythropoiesis in the bone marrow will lead to widening of diploid spaces and thinning of the inner and outer table of the skull that will create a hair on end appear moving to the next the sickle cell anemia the sickle cell anemia it is a point mutation in the beta globin gene that leads to missense mutation specifically specifically it involves the substitution of adenine for the thymine in the sixth codon of the beta that results in abnormal hemoglobin So, so the normal protein contain glutamine and it is replaced by valine that leads to point mutation among hepatitis syphilis lositis plummer vinson syndrome mikkel syndrome squamous cell carcinoma is most likely to occur in both the syphilitic lositis and plummer vinson syndrome they are associated with chronic irritation and inflammation of oral cavity that leads to increased risk of squamous cell carcinoma so your answer is syphilitic lositis and plummer vel syndrome plummer vinson syndrome patient with history of betel quid chewing for the past 5 years with ulcerative lesion incisional biopsy was performed and histological examination re- revealed the dysplastic stratified squamous epithelium so peripheral palisading of the cells the peripheral palisading of cells can be seen your diagnosis is squamous cell carcinoma so these these uh, these features are of squamous cell carcinoma which of following is not cause of macroglossia it's leukemia so remember that leukemia is not a cause of macroglossia macroglossia is the enlargement of the tongue hemangioma lymphangioma they are the vascular malformation that can lead to tongue enlargement down syndrome it is a genetic disorder that may include macroglossia as one of its feature the surface of oral cells oral squamous cell carcinoma will usually feel to touch it will be a rough to touch so this roughness is due to irregular and ulcerated or nodular nature of the tumor cramping of tongue after drinking cold water is it is paramyotonia 
it is a disorder that is associated with muscle stiffness and prolonged muscle contraction so the cold temperature it can increase the myotonic <laughs> symptoms in the individual with the, this condition the weakness of muscles facial muscle that there is inability to open and close eye and mouth it is seen it is seen in uh, mild restrictive muscular dystrophy so weakness of a uh, facial muscle that leads to inability to open and close the eye it is seen in option c petrified man petrified man it is condition that is seen in myostitis ossificans that is formation of in myostatic ossificans you will see there will be formation of heterotropic bone as result of trauma or injury to the muscle so whenever there is injury to the muscle there will be formation of heterotropic bone within the muscle so that can lead to muscle stiffness pain and limited range of motion so that is why it is known as a petrified man gamma gamma gandhi gamma bodies are seen in they are seen in sickle cell anemia so these are the small calcified nodules that can be seen in the spleen and they are associated with chronic congestion so these nodules are seen in individuals with the sickle cell anemia due to the congestion of uh, congestion of the sickle the rbc in the spleen so spleen it plays a significant role in filtering the damage or the abnormal uh, red blood cells so these process can lead to formation of these calcified nodules which one is a oral pre cancer it's speckled leukoplakia so speckled leukoplakia is a oral pre cancerous lesion it is also known as erythroleukoplakia or mixed leukoplakia 